Is that the Campanile? Wait, what time is it? Hello, and welcome to the first episode of the Berkeley at Home Variety Show. I'm Patrick Holmes, and on this week's episode, we'll hear from Chancellor Carol Chris, get a reflection from a graduating senior on their time at Berkeley, and get some safety tips from Makai Polk. We created Berkeley at Home to bring the campus spirit home to you while we're all sheltering in place. But we're not the only ones who had that idea. Groups from all across UC Berkeley have been creating their own versions of at-home content. We'll round up some of these efforts in just a minute, but first, we have some breaking news. The Campanile Falcons hatched three chicks this weekend. For more on that story, we turn to our chief wildlife correspondent, Mike Durda. Thanks, Patrick. Here's a story that'll make you grin. Peregrine, that is. This past weekend, Berkeley's very own peregrine falcon family grew by three. Mother Annie and Father Grinnell, who took up residence in the Campanile in 2016, welcomed triplets into the world when three of their eggs hatched on Saturday and Sunday. Berkeley doctoral student Sean Peterson and his wife, biologist Lynn Schofield, run the Cal Falcon social media project and celebrated the births by hosting a Hatch Day Q&A on YouTube for an audience of about 500. Peterson and Schofield said the birds will be able to see and will double in size in the next five days and that they'll start their next set of feathers in 10. You can catch up on all the action and view live webcams by visiting calfalcons.berkeley.edu. That's it from here, Patrick. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Mike, for that update. For those looking to congratulate the happy parents, they're registered at the Tractor Supply Farm Store in American Canyon and at Creighton Kids. We mentioned earlier that the Berkeley campus spirit is alive and well in the virtual world. In addition to the show, there are numerous ways to bring the Berkeley campus home to you. For those at home with kids, the Lawrence Hall of Science and Science at Cal have both compiled at-home science activities and experiments for all ages. Or you can get a break from your kids by sending them up for free tutoring for K-8 students from the CalTeach program. Cal Performance's Executive and Artistic Director Jeremy Geffen has compiled a series of performing arts videos for enjoying at home. And if you're a reader, the UC Berkeley English Department has curated a quarantine book list, and UC Berkeley librarians have suggestions for things to read while you're stuck at home. Speaking of books, you can access digital versions of much of the library's physical volumes via a digital library. And tune in to Berkeley Conversations to hear from experts about what they're learning about the pandemic. Episodes stream live two to three times per week. Lastly, the Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive was set to host a very special exhibit this spring after receiving a historic gift of African-American quilts last year. Unfortunately, the museum is temporarily closed, but that's not stopping them from sharing the art, culture, and community we all crave right now. BAM PFA Director and Chief Curator Lawrence Ridner offers a virtual tour of the exhibition Rosie Lee Tompkins, A Retrospective. Tompkins quilts rarely conform to the dimensions of a bed, the traditional standard, and they reflect an improvisational approach to composition. In many cases, they have no obvious orientation, so the curators have decided how they should be hung. You can find that on their website. You can also find links to all of these resources and more by going to the Berkeley at Home webpage. You'll find a link by visiting the campus COVID-19 page and then click on Berkeley at Home. For this inaugural edition of the Berkeley at Home Variety Show, we asked UC Berkeley Chancellor Carol Chris if she had anything she'd like to share with the campus community. Here's what she had to say. Hello. I want to offer a brief message of thanks to every student, staff, and faculty member at Berkeley for helping our campus navigate one of the most disruptive periods in our history. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who has gone above and beyond to ensure the health and safety of our community. Thank you to the faculty and staff who have helped us keep our core academic mission intact as our lives and work have moved online. And thank you to our students who have modeled strength, flexibility, and goodwill as they adapted to a virtual learning environment. Even amidst significant turmoil, the Berkeley spirit of brilliance, ingenuity, collaboration, and selflessness have been on full display. Take care of yourselves and your families, and please be safe during this time. We will see you again soon. Go Bears. Thank you, Chancellor Chris. 
A few weeks ago, thousands of students from around the world found out that they have been accepted to UC Berkeley. For many, attending the world's greatest public university has been a lifelong dream. Several of these students turned to the popular video sharing platform TikTok to share the good news. One video in particular stood out to me. So what do you think? Yeah. I don't wanna fall asleep. I don't wanna pass away. I've been thinking of our future because I'll never see those days. I don't know why this has happened, but I probably deserve it. In addition to staying connected while at home, there are several other efforts underway to help us all stay healthy. For more on that story, here's our chief health correspondent, Mike Durda. 997, 998. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. But that's right, both Rec Sports and WorkFit are offering virtual classes and resources for the UC Berkeley community. Classes range from yoga flows to cardio workouts and are absolutely free. And in a series of short videos, UC Berkeley psychologist Dr. Keltner, who has studied stress, relationships, and well-being for 25 years and co-founded the campus's Greater Good Science Center, shares ideas and practices for cultivating resilience and connection as we face the challenges of the coming months. You'll find links to all of these health resources on the Berkeley at Home webpage. Thank you for that report, Mike. We now turn to a segment we call, In Case You Missed It, a look at some of the headlines from Berkeley News. When UC Berkeley graduate student Abrar Abidi heard that several staff members at the San Francisco County Jail had tested positive for COVID-19, he and others worked around the clock to manufacture, package, and deliver more than 900 bottles of hand sanitizer to the jail. That's enough for each inmate at all five county lockups. That was the weekend of March 28th, a blur in a whirlwind of activity for Abidi and colleague Yvonne Howe. All told, since March 17th, that was the first day of the statewide shelter-in-place mandate, the two have worked day and night to mix more than 400 gallons of sanitizer, using a student teaching lab, a loyal cadre of lab mates, and ingredients that are standard supplies in many biology labs. They and a couple of dozen volunteers then distributed the free sanitizer in small bottles as well as gallon jugs to homeless shelters, senior centers, hospices, health centers, jails, and other places in the East Bay and San Francisco that have suffered shortages of sanitizer or that serve populations whose safety has been largely ignored as the COVID-19 pandemic rips through the state. You can read the full story and watch the full video on Berkeley News. For graduating seniors, the novel coronavirus has meant that their last semester at Berkeley is far from what they had imagined. We asked some graduating seniors to reflect on their experience at UC Berkeley, and here's what one student had to say. My name is Sarah, and I'm a current senior at UC Berkeley studying architecture and minoring in Spanish language and literature. Um, going to Berkeley these past four years has definitely been the most life-changing experience I've ever had. Um, and I say that because I've changed a lot. I've you know, learned to be confident and inquisitive, and I've made so many memories and friends that I know that I'm gonna keep forever. Um, so I would consider myself a pretty sentimental person, so I've actually kept an entire binder of really important memories that I like to keep with me, you know, concert tickets or boarding passes for my time abroad, things like that. Um, so I had some that I wanted to share. So this first one is a ticket from the first football game I ever went to as a student with my friends in the dorm. Um, and I really want to hold on to this because it's symbolic of something that I had no idea how amazing it was going to be. Um, and I was scared. I was nervous. I had never lived away from my family before. But so quickly I found a Berkeley family that made me feel at home. Um, and I could make mistakes, you know, I could try things that were new um, because I had that family to come back to, even in, you know, a school of 40,000 people. Um, I also have tickets from my time abroad that I kept, um, and studying abroad was definitely the bravest thing I've ever done. Um, and I was really scared to do it, you know, when I got on the plane and kind of went somewhere that was so unfamiliar, but I felt confident and I felt grown up um, and I felt really different from who I was when I first came to Berkeley um, because Berkeley taught me to take chances you know in my classes and my job and my friend groups um, Berkeley told me you know that I could do it um, and it was so worth it you know studying abroad was amazing um, and then lastly I have this art piece that I actually did for one of my classes very recently um, which is really important to me because it kind of symbolizes my growth in college as, um, you know, when I came in as a freshman, I was afraid to embrace my love of art and uh, design as something I could do in a career because I was too afraid that it wouldn't work out. 
yet here I stand, you know, four years later doing what I love, doing what I'm passionate about. Um, and what it took to get here was a lot of courage, you know, and, and, and trying new things. Um, and Berkeley encouraged me to do that. Um, so that's a little insight into my own personal journey at Berkeley. And as I look forward to, you know, the extreme unknown, I have no idea what's coming. It's exciting. It's confusing. Um, I know that Berkeley has taught me that, you know, no matter what, I am ready for it. It can be hard to know where to look for information about how to stay safe and protect yourself and others from coronavirus. Cal football wide receiver Makai Polk offered some safety tips of his own in a video posted to Twitter. enjoyed this inaugural episode of Berkeley at Home Variety Show. If you have ideas for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You'll find the contact form on the bottom of the Berkeley at Home website. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next week.